Welcome to Small Lathe. My Unimap lathe was given to me by my friend Cliff. I definitely owe him a lot because I got introduced into this wonderful machining world which I was not really aware of before then. So it came with a live center. It came with two dead centers but I'm not going to use those. A live center is far more useful and far more efficient but this is really really small. Is 7.7 millimeter outer diameter. So, if you want to turn, for example, an 8 millimeter inner diameter shaft or tubing, you can't do that. Not with this one. Well, you can, but you have to make some sort of jig to hold end somehow. So, I've decided to make a larger live center, and I wanted it to be a dead center as well. So, it has a drilled in notch or groove which I can lock using this screw and now it won't turn. The basic idea is very simple. I've used 20 millimeter out of diameter steel shaft that's a transmission rod. I have an 8 millimeter drilled and reamed hole in the middle it's a blank hole, a dead hole, it doesn't reach all the way out obviously because we need this tail to be held by the chuck, the lathe chuck. And what I have here is uh, the brass bushing here which is 6 millimeter inner diameter, 8 millimeter outer diameter obviously is the part that will suffer all the wear and tear because it has two steel structures uh, around it and the rotation of the steel shaft in the brass bushing will cause the wear and tear but the brass bushing is easily replaceable I can actually take it out so it is a tight fit it fits really snugly it's not easy to take it out but it, it's possible it will take me a few seconds if I want to I had originally planned on using angled ball bearings coned ball bearings but that's what I could find um, in the scale of the Unimat. I couldn't do any bigger metal working not with steel and it had a hard time doing it so I opted for what I could get which is a flat bearing a roller bearing well that's it let's see how it's done
Welcome back to the second week and the second day of the build, basically speaking. Well, I had to do some modifications off camera. This is the base. It had originally a 7mm bored and reamed hole, a dead hole, a blind hole. So I had to extend that to 8mm to fit this bushing. And this shaft, shaft, this shaft had to be reduced to six millimeters so it could fit. As you can see, it's fitting quite freely. I didn't put any oil there yet. Well, I think I'm pretty happy. Now it doesn't get to a full taper, but for the smaller diameter, I have this one. So they're completing each other. This will be used only for the higher diameters. So this part is complete. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I'll show you higher resolution images once I'm done. And let's get going to the other part. I'll turn this into a mill and we'll get cracking. I don't have to drill through the whole section. I just want to get to the inner shaft. So I'm going to drill till I see the brass coming out. Then just a bit more. I have to go just one more millimeter after that. Let's get started. I'll drill this three millimeters in diameter. As you can see, I've cleared the bushing and I've marked just a notch over here as deep as required. Actually, I don't know if you can see that. I've marked a notch in the shaft as required and I've drilled the bushing through. Actually, that's the opposite way. There we go, perfectly aligned. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole 3 millimeters in diameter halfway through and I'm going to tap the rest. That is it. This is ready. As you can see, it's really, really simple. It's not that complex to do. It took me about two weeks and about two days to complete it, but it's nice, it's done, it's working well. And I'm very pleased with it. Last but not least, and this is something I won't show you. I'll have to find a cover for this, otherwise it will get messy with dirt and grime falling into the ball bearings here. So that's something I will do, but not right now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.